This week on Brewpeg, Carlos spends some quality time on Grinder. Robin and I do some business yoga on the roof, Beck tips the wing over the side of the boat, Jess says, encore mofo, and Margot gets all abrasive. We've taken a sunken fishing trawler and converted her to a community funded expedition and research boat crewed by volunteers from around the world. Because life's too short not to fight for your dream. So much happening on the boat this week, we're giving you an extra episode, we just couldn't fit it all in one. We're getting through the last of the pre-launch painting. One of the jobs we had to get done was these rims, they needed their new paint. Do you like the colour? Let us know in the comments, we'd love to know. Stu was beside us a year or so ago and he left some of his hull paint for us and we tried it yesterday on the rims, we're going to put there, and the, um, the vents, the engine vents, and it's a lighter grey than the dark grey and we're thinking that it'll lighten the boat and change it a little bit. Take it from that drug runner sort of <laughs> image to something better. So Into a cooler drug runner. <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> Two-tone drugs. Yeah. So we're trying to decide, but yeah. It, so everyone's pretty much liking the lighter around the room. I like so the lighter. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I said, yeah. I like the two-tone. Why not? It gives a little accent. How about you, Margot? I think I like most of the dark, but... Uh... Mm. So all dark? No, like, because I was thinking you would only to do again the like the bends, or no. you want to do everything. Just everything. just the bends and the room, not everything. I think it's actually yeah. going to come out darker because if that yeah. was the first mix, then it's probably going to be that color, yeah. not that color. Which will be really nice. Yeah, yeah. So it's going it, to it, I think it will be more or less the bottom of that. Yeah. Yes, thing. We have more, maybe the light like this. There is a difference. Yeah. With the okay. okay. Dame is talking about liking the lighter grey underneath the roof on the wheelhouse and on the back cabin. So what about that? Do you want the light underneath as well? Is the room? I think the dark colour all the way to the red. Yeah. So yeah. It'd be easier. Darker, yeah. Yeah, darker and then I light think... on the edge. Yeah. And the, the vents. Can you live with that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? A bit more often. Just don't tell them what we're talking about. It just get a yes or a no. Get a yes or a no, just randomly. But then decide whatever it is that I'm going to. <laughs> All right. So decision made. So rim and outside of the vents. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Some jobs that we started two weeks ago are starting to get finished. So can you guys fake turn and face me with your lovely faces? Completing boat work whilst looking like prats. <laughs> Margaret's so brilliant at doing the sanding and painting of our woodwork and cabinets. We thought we'd get this desk done as well. It needs to be done and while we're in the yard we've got a big space. And behind the scenes, Burke's continuing with our stainless water pipes. This is a project that he's taken on. He's getting bloody good at TIG welding so he's dealing with all of the stainless pipe work to get the fresh water out of our tanks, through our pump and up to the faucet. Carlos wire brushed the four deck, then taped up, ready to paint. One of our lovely patrons, Robin, is flying in in his own plane to join us for a week and uh, something happened. Here we are in sunny Toowoomba and I've discovered that a very important part 
of the aeroplane is this switch, which is called the battery and the battery switch, it's the master switch, and it broke. Look, it does that, it's quite amusing. And we have to order a new one from the US. So Toowoomba Adventure. So I dropped the uh, plane off with some nice engineers at Toowoomba. Had to catch two Ubers uh, to get to the Avis rental car. There's the hire car. And um, only about um, an hour and a half from uh, Brewpeg. So we've got heaps going on this week. We're getting the solar down onto the roof and we're also getting the stabilizers working. To do that, Robin has flown up from Sydney. <laughs> He's been here before, about 18 months ago. You might remember Robin, he actually helped us sandblast uh, in the sandblasting bay down the end of the yard. He helped us sandblast the wings and the arms. And the plan this week is actually to get the arms on the stabilizers so we can get them working. So first step of getting the stabilizers working, these plastic strips, these little ultra high density polyethylene, they slide inside the steel casing and that basically gives a soft um, surface that doesn't wear very, very fast. Here's another couple bits of it like that. So it's three mil thick or what's that, one eighth of an inch. Um, and it's 40 mil, which is who knows how many bananas wide. And they're three meters long, which is the correct measurement because it's metric. So the first step to getting the slider plastic in is we've changed the plastic. So originally I had four millimeter thick plastic. I've changed it down to three millimeters. So there's one on either side. So I've gained two millimeters of additional clearance. And I've changed the pin from a 32 mil pin to a 30 mil pin because they were a bit tight before. They would bind up and we had to sort of push them down and force them. By doing what we've done, we've gained a bit of clearance and they should slide up and down perfectly free now. So we have to go and fit these plastic strips. Doing that means that we have to tap them, countersink them, and then fit new bolts holding them all together. Is using a spiral tap on a rattle gun, tiny little rattle gun, and then we put it through a hole that's already been pre-tapped for the old sliders, and that should just slide through now. Yep. And basically what that does is clean the thread out and drill the hole in exactly the right place for the new slider. Now that we've got the plastic off, you can see we've countersunk this top one already, and these holes here are ready to go. You can kind of see them just poking through. Now we just need to run our countersink down in there. Actually, that's already gone. That was quick. I think that's all. Is that enough? I should get one of the um, screws and just check for yeah, size. Yeah, let's do a double checky. Hang on. Easy, tiger. While I'm drilling through, I just yeah. put a clamp with a big board on oh, the back, oh, and I can do a whole lot at yeah, once. Yeah, oh great, great. Yeah. yeah, that's a much better way than this is still fiddly, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Blame the guy that designed it. <laughs> right, no, no it'll I... be good once it's in. Something to factor in with brew pegs, wings, and sliders is cost. Normally, these channels that Robin is putting the plastic into is made out of stainless and you don't have any plastic in that stainless channel. To do that on Brewpeg was about two and a half to three thousand dollars when we priced it up. To do it in steel it's about two hundred to three hundred dollars so that's why we decided to do it in steel, sandblast and paint it and then put plastic sliders in there to prevent rust and wear. Hello? I think something interesting just happened with the other wing. <laughs> oh, look, the wing's down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right then. That happened. Yeah. Cable uh, broke. The cable was completely loose. Gosh, look at that end of it. The end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine, everything's good. Wing's down. That's fine. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the wing will come off alright.
Yeah. You're letting loose, mate. Oh, you're no. just letting loose. No, no, it was already real loose. I was tightening it back up. Ah. Yeah, I was just taking okay. the slack out and getting it ready, yeah. and then yeah. it just broke. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well. When it's down. Yeah. Let's hit that again. Well, that's a holy cow. That's why. Radio, some analysis. This cable is rusty, but that's not the reason why this broke. The reason why this broke was there was slack in the line when we released the safety pin. It allowed the wing to fall about a metre, which then made the slack be taken up in that wire rope. There's a nylon pulley on the wing. That basically cut through the pin that was in the centre of that nylon pulley. So it acted like a shock absorber, but by that stage the wire had to do a very sharp 90 degree bend on the 12mm pin that was holding everything, which essentially cut through the wire. So even if this was brand new wire rope, it still would have failed. We have a solution for this, and you'll see the start of that solution in this episode. We're basically putting a steel pulley in there, and we're also increasing the pin diameter up to 20mm, so this can never happen again. Oh. Hmm. That's, um, that's exciting. Oh, well, we'll fix that then. Yeah. So there's your ASMR doing lots of screws at the tech level on forward starboard um, sliders. So there we have all the way from the bottom a little gap up through here, and then up above the roof, which I did yesterday. Not far. <laughs> yeah. Um, I reckon within two months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not far at all. Yeah, I know. Nine years. You're starting to see the end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Do you want to haul all that stuff up? Yep. Adjust the thing, on it, it? Yeah, yeah, just you have to hold it in an angle to make it catch. Some nice finished screw things. We're going to get rid of the protruding bits of screw later on. I talked to Damien about whether we shorten them before, but he thought it's actually just easier to. Uh, grind them off and we'll slap a bit more of this paint on which is high build and it'll be fine so there you go it's a day of I'm going to keep doing this till it's all finished and then we'll have the whole starboard side done here's a new lot of plastic straps to do for the port side Margot is sorting out the editing desk down here. This is the final coat of paint. 
it's almost a full sheet of ply with that thing. Down here the wings, they're getting sorted by Robin, he's getting the plastic strips in. Beck, Carlos, he's in the kitchen here organising himself. <laughs> Down this way we've got the fast release wing. Okay, next step is to uh, get the right lengths on all of the strips. I'm doing all the labels facing out. put some screws in there and then because we haven't cut these to length yet so I'll just put screws in to hold the top and then we'll just work our way around the four we'll cut them to length and then we'll continue on with on nice it. if I just put in one of these then we'll just hold it the right in the right spot and then when we go downstairs we can um oh I see we can chop them to the right length and then once they're at the right lengths we can we can come back up here and oh that is turning only half of these work with the end here but that's far enough in to sort of to I think to uh, keep it in position. Only half of the... Yeah. This is this is the long way around, like when we finally put it in, they're coming in from that direction. Oh, I see. But we're just using this to sort of like, it's like Clicos and Cleek Bottle, we're just using it to kind of keep pin it and keep mm. the spacing while we draw, otherwise the spacing between the holes goes out. And it I got it. It gets a bit crappy. Forward inboard, aft inboard, forward outboard, aft outboard. The two outboard ones have got the chop um, for the gap where we insert the arms. So it's possible that you saw this wing come down in the high speed setting. A couple of things. So, I didn't have a sheath in this, I just had a bolt in there and when that thing started to manoeuvre over it, it broke it. I didn't realise I didn't have a sheath in it until it broke. Luckily, we kind of planned for if it fell, no one was under it, so it wasn't really a big deal. But, one thing I want to do is upgrade this. So this is 12mm. I'm not happy with my design, I, I, I want to beef it up. So I'm going to do, similar to what I've done here, this is a 32mm pin, I'm not going to go to that extent. I'm going to go to a 20 mil pin so this is just a bolt that I'm using to put it all together for now but I've got some steel sheaths rather than nylon sheaths so I'm going to be using those as well um, yeah in the hopes that we can just beef it up so that it's nice and strong and this is bigger than what I see a lot of the trawlers use we're using a slightly different system they use their trawler winches to lift up and down we don't have trawler winches so we're kind of making a bit of a an alternative way of doing it but I'm thinking that this will be plenty strong now it does however mean that I need to drill these two 6mm stainless cheeks from 12mm out to 20mm. So I'm going to step up, I'm using my battery drill so I don't want to go straight to a 20 I'm going to step up, I'm going to go 12 to 14, 14 to 17, 17 to 20. And that'll take us out. Now the bolt itself, drop that through. It's a shanked bolt but the bolt shank is not long enough so if you push that across the shank barely covers this pulley so that's not ideal you don't really want this pulley running on the thread out here like that so i do have a longer bolt on order but this is going to be enough to basically you know mock up the system and get it working and i can easily swap the bolt out later so i'll do that once as soon as that bolt arrives i'm not using a stainless bolt so these cheeks are stainless this here is just a mild steel sheath and this is a high tensile bolt and I'm going to stay with a high tensile bolt with a longer shank on it mainly to prevent any galling. If this rusts, who cares, I can replace it. If it galls, it's effectively welded itself onto the wing. So this is going to be awesome. Alright, drills. I've just sharpened my drill. I've got it set on low. Let's see if we can actually get through this. Might get some water to cool it down. It's not going to show on camera, but there's so many bloody midges and mosquitoes around. Alright, stainless, you want to keep it cold when you're drilling. So you want to go slow and you want to use water or whatever. Just You just need to keep it cold. You can use cutting oils and things like that. You don't have to. Water's fine because you don't need it to be lubricated to cut. You need the temperature down. 
That's why you should wear a safety face. So let's see if we bugger the face. Yep. Chip the drill. Let's give it a sharpen. That's also pretty normal when cutting into stainless. Stainless, low RPM, lots of pressure into the cut. What you're trying to avoid is getting too hot and work hardening the material. Once you work harden it, it's a bloody nightmare to cut at that point. 17 mil now. Get rid of some heat. Right, drill sharp. Amazing what a sharp drill does. And it's not sharp anymore. What have I done? Oh, it radius the corners. As sometimes happens with stainless, I'm struggling to cut through the very back of the cut. So I'm gonna throw a bit of cutting oil on. This was kindly donated by Daniel. This has come all the way from the States. This is like a gel rather than an oil stuff is absolutely magical to use i've never seen it in aussie but this ultra sp super premium metal cutting lubricant i believe it's an american product um this stuff is flipping amazing as a gel it stays on the workpiece much more than oil does so yeah really love this stuff Sound good. What is going on? I think I've worked harder than stainless because I'm killing drills just like there's nobody's business. All right, took a couple of sharpens, but we're through the crappy bit and into this plate. So if you do get work hardening on stainless, the trick is basically cool it down, sharpen your tool so that it's as good as you can get it, and then same deal, lots of pressure, low RPM, and you're just gonna kind of push through it. If you can't like get from the other side, that some you can sometimes fix it by drilling from the other side but it's pretty much heat that causes the issue. If you're not putting enough pressure onto the onto the cutting face and you're letting it get too hot, as soon as those two situations happen, stainless just turns into something like flipping titanium. You can't actually get through it really easily. So yeah, sharpen your tools up, cut through it. Yeah, I'm getting too hot, I can hear it fizzing away so how do you know if your drill is getting a bit dead it's always the corners that are the giveaway so I don't know if you can see that but that cutting face you might be able to see it that way that cutting face is a chip on this corner I've basically buggered this drill I have to sharpen that off so that's why I keep every time I chip it I have to keep basically filing it back like you would a chip in a wood file um, or a you know like a plane or something like that you have to just keep going back until you've got a nice sharp cutting edge because the work happens on the corners of these big drills. That's why you always put a pilot drill in so the center's not doing anything. It's always happening on the edges, and it's the edges that matter. In this case, this drill, only one of the blades now is cutting. The second one is just mashing things up and making it impossible to cut through. However, we're 99% of the way there, so I don't need to keep going with this. I can go straight to the 20 mil.
it'll keep dribbling down into it. There we go, how's that? Have I broken it? Yes! Did it? Yeah, do another sharpen. <laughs> so Margot is building these pieces of timber here. They go on the front cabin wall under the editing desk. We need to get the editing desk back together. And there's an ever so slight angle that we have to take account of, which is the angle of the deck on the brew peg. 85 degrees. So just gonna get that marked and cut. And that allows us to fit this desk back in. So half of this desk tucks underneath the front deck, but we have to do all of the insulation. So Margot's working on that while the rest of us work on pre-launch jobs. This is something that's just easier to do right now. That's why we're doing it right now. And once that's done, then she's starting on the room downstairs and building all of the um, underwater line insulation for the hot water cupboard area. See how you can't get that back in? Yeah. Because that's holding it, but also there's a bow in the wall. Yeah. 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 But it's okay? Actually, here, I'll put it back up against the wall. Like on the top, I think it's good. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, put it, put it in, mark those corners at 45, mm. and then do what I just did then, and we'll get the curve of the wall marked onto the timber itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's... Uh... Yeah, it's that top, eh? Yeah. With Duncan's arrival, the conversations yeah, yeah. about getting the solar up on the roof up. started. Yeah, we're going to do a human chain. Yeah. Out of the engine room and up. Yep. Some we'll probably unbox there. them up there because it's probably faster. Without telling anyone, we'll have some at the end just to keep passing. The unboxing is going to be the slow part, which is the bottleneck. Yeah. So I'm thinking like at least two people unboxing. Mm. It'll look good up top. Yeah, yeah, cool. But that's actually it's a good idea doing it up there because as they're unboxed, they can go straight down to their, yeah. their playing spot. And then just right the box, just over the side. Yep. Mm. Hoopla! Just Boost the completely disproportionately thrown. Yes. It's just a, a semicircle all the way around the boat of just old boxes. Crumble. I didn't know there was crumble happening. Yeah. Yeah, oh, crumble? Crumble? Yes. Yeah. She would crumble. take me the other yeah. crumble like this, I can do it. That's right, you can have some. It's fun. Well, it was the great crumble incident of 2023. <laughs> so, so you get one crumble. Yeah. Very generous. Crumble was made. Yeah, crumble was made, and then the whole crew, excluding Margot, got to tuck in. <laughs> and the, Jesus, there was feet stamping around the boat after that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking throwing tools down. And when Margo. I go for a walk, when I came back, no more cake. <laughs> Nothing. Second last. Here, the second last. Yeah, yeah. Who had the last? I didn't clean it off, so that leaves one person. Dum, 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 dum. It was boy George. I crumble for you. We can or, see it was a keeper. Or did Margot yeah, have yeah. some? Ah. No, no, okay. I, I would. She sleep crumbles. <laughs> but with so much going on this week, with six people on the boat, we have to split this episode into two, so this week you're getting a double. Where well, you can see Carlos cutting wood, Margot sanding wood, Damien completely giving up on the battery drill, Birk showing a little bit of leg, and Jess entertaining us all. And thanks to Robin and Duncan for all of your help and work on Brewpeg. Next week we've got a little bit of a surprise for you. Ooh.